Radiology. Okay. Radiology is important to know as an assistant because you are almost always going to be one of the people that are helping restrain the patient. So my old professor um, from veterinary technology school, Dr. Harrell, um, he told me once, um, radiology is like sex. Positioning is everything. So an x-ray don't mean shit if you don't have proper positioning. So we are going to be talking about what an x-ray is and how to get a good picture. So the goal, there's two main goals of radiology. So getting a picture that is officially a diagnostic radiograph, meaning a radiograph that you can look at and, uh, and make a diagnosis from, um, and staying safe because we are dealing with radiation. Um, now, what I mean by diagnostic radiograph is anybody can put a patient on a table and press a button and come up with an x-ray. But if your patient is not positioned properly, then that x-ray is not helpful. In fact, it's even more confusing. There is a right and a wrong way to shoot x-rays. Um, and if we get into the habit of taking poor x-rays, this is actually really bad for our clients because if we have to refer them somewhere, let's say we take an x-ray of somebody and it's of poor positioning and we send that patient to MedVet, um, MedVet will not be able to use our radiographs as diagnosable. So they will have to take their own radiographs. So that means that a client spent over $100 at our clinic on x-rays to then get told by a specialty clinic they need to retake them. And then that client has to pay another $300. So we have wasted that client over $400 by not taking a proper x-ray. So there is definitely parameters and things that we want to do when we are taking rads of a patient. So before we talk about like how to take a good x-ray, I'm gonna like give you a little um, baby TED talk on what an x-ray is. So x-rays, they are electromagnetic radiation. They're in the same family as visible light, but their wavelength is much shorter. Um, they are not visible with the naked eye. So an x-ray machine is basically like a giant camera that takes a picture, but instead of having a flash of visible light, it shoots x-rays to expose film versus visible light in a camera. So when you're looking at an x-ray, um, what is the, the dark parts that you're seeing are where the x-rays have passed through the body and didn't absorb anywhere. The white parts you are seeing is where the x-ray has passed through um, the animal's body and, and the x-ray has become absorbed. So the brighter the parts on the image is the more x-rays that were able to be absorbed by that body part. So the more dense the body part, the more x-ray is absorbed. That's why when you look at an x-ray, if you look in the dead center where the lungs are, they're much darker because there's less things there. A lung is just a thin membrane filled with air. There's not a lot going on. So the x-ray beam can easily pass through. The more the beam passes through, the darker the image. The more it's absorbed, the lighter. So that's why things like bones are so bright white, clearly defined, because they're super dense and they absorb a lot of the x-rays being emitted by the x-ray machine. So there are hazards of working with x-rays and radiation. Um, a lot of people kind of are a little bit lackadaisical about this, especially people that don't have formal education on like what an x-ray is and what it can do um, but it is a form of radiation and it can be very harmful okay um, the number one cancer of veterinary professionals is thyroid cancer because that's a, a common spot for radiation to absorb when people are taking x-rays um, so when we're talking about x-ray damage and radiation damage radiation affects places that have rapidly dividing cells. That's what takes the greatest damage when you're shooting x-rays. Um, so it can cause somatic damage, so damage to you as a person, but it also can cause genetic damage. So it can damage ovaries, testes, and it can affect your future children and, and grandchildren. Um, so there are safety measures that we want to take every single time that we take an x-ray because 
when we're in the doctor's office or the hospital and we're getting an x-ray, we're getting shot with an x-ray beam one time in our lives and then we're walking out the door and leaving. Um, one time radiation exposure does not cancer make. But when you're in a profession where you are constantly shooting radiographs, um, you've got to be careful because the more frequent the exposure, the higher risk you are at getting cancer from radiation. And it does happen. Um, so there are just precautions that we should take every single time that we shoot a radiograph. So what are the safety measures? Like how do we like try to avoid getting cancer from radiation? So number one, always wearing proper protection equipment when you're taking a radiograph. So that means lead line gowns and thyroid shields. Um, this goes for any clinic that you ever may find yourself in. Um, for like the first years of my veterinary career as an on-the-job trained technician, I worked at a hospital that only had lead line gowns. I didn't even know the dangers of radiation. I took so many radiographs without wearing any protective equipment. I never even knew a thyroid shield was a thing. And then when I became more experienced and, and started venturing out into other clinics and then I went to college and I learned all this shit, I was like, I could have, this hospital was being very negligent and I could have like legit, I mean, I could still come up with cancer sometime in the future like you're playing with fire here and you've got to stay protected so lead line gown always thyroid shield always 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 please please do not just be like i'm gonna snap this x-ray really quick and it'll only be one time because i promise you when you get in that mindset it won't be one time it'll be like seventy-eight thousand times in your career that you're gonna throw an animal on the x-ray table and hit that button without wearing that lead line gown or that thyroid shield get in the habit of wearing it every single time um also when we're taking x-rays it's not just our ovaries and our thyroid and our mammary glands that we need to watch out for we should watch out for our hands so in that x-ray machine when that light's being pressed and you see that light shining down that patient that light is the primary beam that is where x-ray is immediately being directed to you never ever ever want to have any body parts of a human being in that primary beam no fingers no nothing you want to be positioning your patient to where no person is being exposed even a fingertip should not be in that primary beam that is a big huge no-no and there are techniques and tips and tricks that we can use to make sure that we never have to put a body part in the primary beam but if there ever needs to be a time where there is a positioning that you just cannot get your hand out, there are lead line gloves that you can wear so that even though your hand's in that primary beam, it's protected by lead. Another thing, nobody under 18 years old should ever be taking x-rays, ever. 18-year-olds are still tiny people, okay? They're still growing. And what did we just say? X-rays affect rapidly dividing cells. So no children nobody under the age of 18 because they're still growing this also goes for pregnant women a fetus is literally just rapidly dividing cells anybody who's pregnant should not be taking x-rays i know people who are like i just double gowned or i just did this being pregnant is only nine months of your existence the your clinic can survive for nine months without you taking x-rays this is not just for a low-cost animal medical center this is anywhere you go don't allow pregnant staff members to take x-rays. It's just not safe. You can survive without one person taking an x-ray for nine months. It's just nine months versus the overall development and lifetime of their future child. Please. Um, also, you want to avoid having to do retakes. So getting your positioning down perfectly and then shooting that x-ray. Waiting until you are at the perfect, beautiful moment to take that rad because the more radiographs you take of a patient the more times you're being exposed to radiation so getting good at positioning no children no body parts lead line gown and thyroid shield always so when we're talking about radiation and primary beam so there's primary radiation and secondary radiation primary beam radiation is the actual beam of x-rays being shooted out onto the table from the tube it's the most intense radiation from the machine and again no human body part in the primary beam in that light ever 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 
secondary radiation is where we get our, as technicians and veterinary support staff, this is where we get our radiation exposure from. It's also known as scatter radiation. So x-rays, when they shoot down onto the table out of that primary beam of light, they hit the table, they hit the patient, and they bounce. We can't see it because x-rays are not visible to the human eye. But when those x-rays are released from that tube, the primary radiation shoots down onto the surface, the patient, the table, and then it bounces everywhere. It goes all over the place. Um, so it hits the patient, and then it hits you, it hits the walls, it hits everything. Um, so the, the smaller your primary beam, the less scatter radiation that you are going to have. So another technique to kind of stay safe is if you're taking an x-ray of the abdomen, position for just the abdomen, don't have that primary beam opened up all the way. You know where you need to position. Shorten your beam a little so you only get the borders of which you need and you're reducing scatter radiation. So this is an example of what I'm talking about when I'm talking about scatter radiation. All these lines over here on this x-ray table that are shooting everywhere, you see the big multiple giant lines coming out of the primary beam. They hit this table and they bounce everywhere. This is what scatter radiation is. So even though our bodies are not directly in the primary beam of where the radiation is being emitted, we're still being exposed to radiation because that radiation bounces. Taking a diagnostic radiograph is a skill that needs to be perfected, okay? So usually when radiographs are taken, they're taken at right angles of each other. So that will be either a VD or a, or a DV and a lateral x-ray. So DV and VD meaning dorsal ventral and ventral dorsal. Um, and lateral, which we already learned, means like on the side. Um, so in order to know how to set up for a diagnostic radiograph, we need to know what the patient weighs and what body part is being x-rayed. And then we need to set the machine in regards to what the technique chart says that we need to set it to. This is not really an assistant thing. This is more of a technician thing. Um, but just to give you some a little bit of knowledge of like how we decide how much radiation a patient will get. Weight and part being x-rayed. There's a little chart on the wall and it'll tell you exactly what you need to know. And there's buttons on the machine that um, determine who's gonna go where, what's gonna go what. And they all mean something, but again, that's we don't need to really worry about that. You don't need to keep that in your brain right now. There's so much other information that's coming at you later on in life. As the more experience you get, the more that you work in clinics, the, the more understanding that you'll have of x-rays and then we can discuss exactly what KVP and um, MV means. Um, but uh, for each body part that we x-ray, there are parameters, markings that we should know of what we need to get in this x-ray versus what we don't need to get in this x-ray. So this is just some a little information about what these words mean, like understanding VD, DV, AP, PA, and lateral. Um, so dorsal is the patient's back. So think like a dorsal fin on a dolphin. Ventral is the patient's belly. Um, the A and the P, anterior is towards the patient's head. Posterior is towards the patient's tail. The first term in a pair, so if we're talking about DV versus VD, the first letter in that pair tells you where the x-ray enters the body, and the second term in that pair tells you where the x-ray leaves the body. So if we're taking a VD of a patient, the x-ray is going to enter at the V, which is the belly, and it's going to exit at the D, which is the back, the dorsal. Um, so now when we're talking about laterals, we're doing we're talking about a right lateral or a left lateral. Again, same deal. Right lateral is the patient is laying on their right side. Left lateral is patient laying on their left side. So for the most part, when we're taking a two-view x-ray, we're always going to take a right lateral radiograph. When our patient is laying on the table, we will always, always, always 
make sure their head is facing towards the isolation door, meaning their head is not facing towards the computer. Because there is a theory, it's a scientific thing about the anode and the cathode and the things that create the x-rays in the tube, that you always want the head, which is denser, facing towards the cathode side. It's called Stane's Law, but you don't need to know about it. I'm just letting you know why we always put the head towards the isolation door and not head towards the computer. Um, when we're radiographing limbs, that's when we're going to talk about AP and PA. Um, so you're only going to hear AP and PA when you're talking about a limb, but a lot of people do use dorsal and ventral when they're talking about limbs. Technically, it should be AP and PA. That's only for you to know if you move on to a different clinic and you want to go somewhere else. It's good to know that they use AP and PA when talking about limbs. Um, so when we are radiographing a limb, what side we're going to put it on versus right or left. Now, remember, if we're doing chest or abdomen, we almost always want a right lateral recumbency. Um, but when we are t doing limbs, we want whatever recumbency the injured side is. So if they if we're injured, if they have an injured right leg, we're doing right lateral recumbency. If they have an injured left leg, we're doing a left lateral recumbency X-ray. So. It just depends on the injury. Always injured side limb onto the table. So here's a little apply what you've learned thing. Now we said that where the primary beam enters is the first letter in the term and where the primary beam exits is the second letter in the term. So if I have a patient laying on their back with their belly up, what position would this be? Where is the primary beam entering? The chest or the belly, so the ventral side. And where is the primary beam exiting? Their back, their dorsal side. So this position right here is a VD. The patient is laying on their back with their belly side up. X-ray is hitting the chest slash belly, exiting their back. VD. All right, another one. So this patient is laying on their side. What would we call this? What side is the patient laying on? The patient's laying on their right side. What positioning are they in? What do we say means side? Lateral. This x-ray is a right lateral x-ray. All right, what about this one? I'm gonna give you a little moment. So we have a patient who's laying with their belly on the table and their back is upright. So remember, we are naming our x-ray positioning based on where the primary beam enters and then where it exits. So where is the primary beam entering and where is it exiting? So this would be a DV. Primary beam is hitting their back, which is their dorsal side, and exiting their belly, the ventral side. So this is a DV. Typically, almost all x-rays are taken in VD positioning. So that first image that we saw where they're laying on their back with their belly up. Um, this position right here, the DV, is usually done on patients that um, have their breathing compromised and they can't tolerate laying on their back. They start panicking and freaking out because maybe their lungs are filled with fluid or maybe they just can't move air very well. They Maybe they're in heart failure and it's just very difficult for them to breathe and so they start fighting. So anytime that you have a, a patient who has breathing compromisation, is that even a word? I don't know, I've been talking for hours. Um, anytime you have a patient that has their breathing compromised, um, you always want to do a DV versus a VD. You won't see it very often, but that's that's when this little uh, positioning is used for mostly. So now we're going to talk about what we're looking for when we're taking specific x-rays. So whenever a doctor is requesting x-rays, they're going to be giving you a body part of what they want. Um, uh, so let's talk about abdominal radiographs first. So typically, it'll be a two view, a right lateral, so patient laying on their right side, and then a VD, so patient laying on their back. Whenever we are shooting x-rays, 
you always want to shoot the lateral before you shoot the VD because your patient is going to be more compliant. If you shoot the VD first, they usually really don't like it, and so they're not going to be willing to lay on their side for you after you've rolled them over on their back. So always shoot lateral and then VD. It's going to be much easier for you. So what are the parameters, the borders of the x-ray of what we're looking for? So when we are shooting an abdominal x-ray, the first part of that x-ray, so the left side of that x-ray, should contain the entire diaphragm. So you want to be able to see on the first half of the x-ray the whole diaphragm, and then the end of that x-ray, so the right part of that x-ray, you want to be able to see the greater trochanter of the femur. So that means the head of the thigh, the big bone in the thigh that attaches to the pelvis, you want to be able to see it. So we're looking for the entirety of the diaphragm all the way to the very top of the leg bone, the back leg bone. That is what we're looking for when we're shooting an abdominal radiograph. If you do not, if your abdominal radiograph, you cannot see the entire diaphragm to the head of the femur, it is not a diagnosable radiograph. That is not the entire abdomen. You could be missing a very important image in that shot. So when we a, a trick to see if you if you got it good the primary beam has a little x on it um as a little x shadow that little shadow should be centered at the 13th rib so again you want the primary beam started at the diaphragm all the way to the greater trochanter when you're looking at your dog you can't look at a dog and know exactly where its diaphragm is if you're not familiar with anatomy so how we find that in a dog that's not skinless and organless is the xiphoid process, which is the spot at the bottom of the ribs where the rib cage meets. You want to count three ribs above it. That is where your diaphragm sits. So poke your finger on your patient and walk three ribs up. That's where the primary beam should start. Then the greater trochander, the head of the femur. How do we know where the top of that leg is? So the primary beam is going to end right at around the middle of the pelvis. So we should have a beautiful bright light on our patient laying on their side or their back from three ribs from the back to the middle of the pelvis. Also when we take a radiograph, we want all the limbs extended. So who's ever holding the front half of the patient is extending their front limbs. Who's ever holding the back half of the patient is extending their back legs, limbs. We do not want the patient's elbows coming into the radiograph because it's going to cover things. We do not want the patient's knees coming into the radiograph because if they tuck their knees in, it's going to cover things. We want an extended, beautiful image with beautiful parameters. This goes for both the lateral and the VD. All limbs extended. So this is an example of good positioning of a right lateral and a VD abdominal radiograph. So if you look at this image, you can see where the primary beam is shining on our patient. Um, you can see the light. So um, this would be three. It starts on the left side of these pictures. So um, you would find the xiphoid process and walk three ribs up. I will show you how to do this. Um, and then the the primary beam ends at uh, the middle of the pelvis. So this is how you know when you're shining your light on your patient that you are getting um, a good image that you know that you're going to have everything that you need to have in that x-ray. Um, also notice how all this dog's legs are extended. There's no elbows being bent in. There's no knees being bent in. Everything is nice and extended so we get a very beautiful clear picture. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. And the dead center of the X, that shadow of an X, you can kind of see it in this first image. That is right at like the, the, the 13th rib. Actually, this one's a little bit less than the 13th rib. That's not always going to be exactly correct. Every body confirmation of a dog is different. This dog is not a good example of the center of the primary beam being on the 13th rib. So you can take that out of your brain for everybody. That's not the main takeaway. You always want to have three ribs above the xiphoid process, 
middle of the femur, that's where you want your rad. And you always want your patient as straight as possible. When they're laying on their side, you want them so straight that every all right and left organs overlap. When you have them on your back, you want their spine nice and straight, no twisting. If there's any twisting, you're not going to have a diagnosable image. So these are two very beautiful examples of perfect abdominal radiographs. So the diaphragm, which is the muscle that controls the breathing of the lungs and that separates the the lungs from the abdomen it separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity so the diaphragm in these two images is per, is beautifully visible you can see exactly where abdomen ends and thorax begins remember that black is air so you want to be able to see a little titch of lung all the way around if at any point your radiograph it does not have the lung visible all the way around the very end of that lung then you've cut off the diaphragm and it's not diagnosable so we see in both these radiographs the beautiful defined diaphragm darkness and then a big bright arcing whiteness that gives us the abdominal cavity then if you look at the second half of the radiograph so the back half or the bottom half um, you can see the pelvis and then the head of the femur on both of these rads the dog is nice and straight. Look at how beautiful on that VD, that spine and that sternum just overlap. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. This is a diagnosable x-ray. This is what we want when we are taking radiographs. So taking the information that we just learned about diagnosable radiographs, I want you to look at these two radiographs and I want you to tell me if they meet the criteria. Do these x-rays have the complete diaphragm all the way to the, tr to the greater trochanter or the head, the top of the, the femur, the thigh. So I want you to take a little look and I want you to just take a moment and tell me how you feel about these radiographs, okay? So what about the first one? Do you think this first x-ray is diagnosable? If you answered no, you are correct. There are two reasons that this x-ray is not diagnosable. The diaphragm is cut off. If you look towards the bottom of this first x-ray, you can start to see here's diaphragm, 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 and then pff, it just got cut off. We don't see the end of it. Also, if you look at the back half of the first x-ray, you don't see any pelvis, you don't see any greater trochanter of the femur. This is not the com a complete abdomen, neither cranially towards the head or caudally towards the tail. This is not a good x-ray. This is a doo-doo x-ray. This would be have to be retaken if this dog, who probably ate a bunch of sewing needles and would probably need to be referred for emergency surgery. But if we sent this dog out, oh my God, one's even in the colon. I didn't even notice that. Um, if we sent this dog out for surgery, the radiographs would be retaken because they are not diagnosable. What about the second radi radiograph? We look at this VD right here. Is this radiograph diagnosable? Well, if we look at the bottom half of the radiograph, we have greater trochanters. So we have the whole back end of the abdomen. That part's correct. But what about the cranial side, the front half of the abdomen? Nope. There is no diaphragm at all. There's actually not even stomach in this dog's radiograph. This is a doo-doo terrible radiograph. Even though this radiograph contains trochanters, it is actually worse than the first radiograph because you can't even see the actual stomach. So uh, both of these are doo-doo garbage. No, they do not pass a diagnostic radiograph check. These would need to be done again. All right, parameters for thoracic radiographs. So just like the abdomen we're going to do typically a right lateral and a vd like i mentioned earlier if the patient is in respiratory distress we're going to shoot a right lateral and a dv instead so instead of rolling the patient over on his back we're going to keep him on his belly because it's going to be easier for him to breathe that way and he will not panic and potentially die um so the parameters for um thoracic radiographs are you want the front half of your primary beam to be slightly in front of the shoulder blade um, all the way to the very top of the last rib you want the entire diaphragm visible but this time instead of the diaphragm being the front half of the x-ray the diaphragm is going to be the back half of the x-ray so typically 
the center of the primary beam where that X is, is going to be at the heart, which is on the seventh rib. Again, super important to extend the limbs. No elbows. The front legs have to be extremely straight. If there's even a slight bend of an elbow, it's going to cover lungs and heart. Straight limbs. Um, also, good good thing to do. It's not always doable, um, but when you're taking RADS for thoracic radiographs, you want to have the button being pressed when the patient is inhaling. That way we get as much space in the lung as possible and it helps us to visualize the heart better. So here are some examples of the right lateral in a DV on thoracic radiographs. So if you look at our first patient, he's laying in right lateral recumbency. That primary beam, the front of it, is starting at the very beginning of the shoulder, right? So the very beginning of the shoulder all the way to the last rib. So if you were to palpate this dog and feel where the end of that primary beam is, that's right where his rib ends. Um, and then if you take a look at the DV radiograph, so it's a DV, not a VD, so our patient's laying on his belly um, to, to keep him n not distressed. But again, that primary beam is entering at the top of that shoulder and ending at that last rib. Every limb is extended because if, if the second that patient bends an elbow in, your image is compromised. It's nice straight positioning with extended limbs. So here are examples of some beautiful thoracic radiographs. Let's look at the first image. When we look at the first image, we have shoulder blade and a little bit of that front leg attached to that shoulder blade. Um, the entirety of the lung, so the entire lung and the full diaphragm. This is a beautiful x-ray. That right lateral is perfect. Now let's look at the VD or the DV. Again, nice extended limbs everything is nice and straight we have the entire lung visible with the entire diaphragm this is what we want the entire lung with the heart and the diaphragm if the diaphragm's cut off it's wrong if the top of the lung is cut off it's wrong it's not diagnosable this is the image that we need to be getting every time when we take a thoracic radiograph all right two thoracic radiographs. I want you to look at these and I want you to tell me what you think. I'm going to give you one moment just to peruse. And I want you to remember what we are looking for in our diagnostic radiograph. All right. This first image, that right lateral x-ray. Is this a yay or a nay? So do we have the full lung? Yeah. Do we have the entire diaphragm? We do, but them legs ain't straight. Now the elbow isn't exactly covering anything, but this had the potential to cover. I would give this radiograph a B plus. This is not perfect. This is not exactly what we're desiring. In an ideal world, those front legs would be extended. If those front legs were extended, this would be a complete 110% past Complete beautiful A plus plus 100. Extend those limbs. This could have been a boo boo on on positioning, but these people got lucky. All right, second radiograph. This VD right here. Is this a pass or a fail? Well, it's a fail. Why? Because you're missing half the lung lobe at the bottom. That the diaphragm is not complete there. If you don't get the entire diaphragm, that means you're not getting the entirety of the lung, and this is a no-go x-ray. There could be a mass on the bottom of that lung, lo lung lobe, and we would never know because we didn't get the caudal end, and we didn't get that full diaphragm. So that is not a diagnosable x-ray. That is an F. All right, x-ray and extremities. So this is where we're going to use that term AP, but also we're also going to call it VD. AP meaning anterior. So if a patient is standing up on a leg, the anterior side is the side that's facing their front and the posterior side is the side that's facing towards the back. Um, but also it can be referred to as a VD because when you lay that leg on a table, there's a, a ventral and a dorsal side. So whenever you're doing a lateral, for your extremities, we're not going to always go to the right lateral. We're going to go to whatever limb is injured. Injured limb side down on the table. 
Um, whenever you're shooting an x-ray for an extremity, you are always including the joint above and below the injury being x-rayed. So if I, if, if our doctor wants us to take an x-ray of an elbow, we are going to include the shoulder and we're going to include the carpus in there because we want to see the joints on both ends. If we're being asked to shoot the carpus, which is the wrist, we want to be able to see the metatarsals and the elbow because those are the two joints that are on either side. So we're, it's not just the joint that we're x-raying. Whatever injury that we are shooting, we want joints on either side now if it's the dead center of the leg if that is a leg that snapped in half we want to include the carpus and the elbow because those are the two joints surrounding that injury so wherever the injury is whether that injury is on a joint or on just bone you want to include joints above and below Sometimes when you're doing an AP or a VD and you're shooting limbs, you can extend both limbs in that x-ray so that way your doctor can compare something. So now we have our injured leg and our doo-doo broken leg so we can see the confirmation of anatomy and it's, it's nice to have for comparison. When we're doing the lateral view, we want to pull the uninjured leg out of the way so we get a nice clear picture of the injured leg without anything overlapping it. So I just realized that I never actually finished this PowerPoint and there's a to be continued on this ladder rule in AP. Um, yeah, uh, so we'll just come back to that one.